how to perform blood film preparation and staining. The objectives in this practical include the method of performing a blood smear, different types of stains which we can use and what I have used during this practical, and finally after staining, what observations we can see while move, focusing the slide under the microscope. So, the first method that we are going to be doing is a blood smear and we should know what is basically a blood smear. A blood smear is a thin film of a blood sample or a drop which we put on a slide and observe the different types of red blood cells and the WBC morphology. So, it is basically used for the morphological study of our blood sample. Why is it useful? It helps us to identify the most important thing which is called as differential counting. In differential counting, we can identify the types of blood cells that is called the first one WBCs along with RBCs and platelets. This allows us to have a complete overview of how is the CBC or the complete blood count of a patient performed. Now, usually every lab does not do the blood smear. It is only used after performing a CBC sample in a machine so that if there is anything low or high, we need to know what is a causative agent or what is the reason behind it. Let's take an example. In a CBC count of a blood report, I found out that the WBC in this, in differential counting, the neutrophil levels are high. So I would like to see a blood smear to see why is or what is the exact count of the neutrophils. By performing a differential counting using the blood smear, I can identify the cause and I might give the diagnosis as it can be the reason is leukemia or any other cause like neutrophilia. So, this is the way we can identify the differential counting along with RBC and platelet counting in a blood smear. So, let us come forward and see the method which we can use in order to perform our first blood smear. The first method is called the wedge method and we are going to be teaching you in this practical only the wedge method. In the wedge method what happens is this, we have a slide. We clean our slide properly to remove all the dust or stay any uh, grease or anything using a type of a gauze or any cloth, preferably gauze. Then we need to mention the patient's ID or the name or whatever the patient is. Fine on one side. Usually we use frosted slides. If you have a blank slide, then you can write it with a pen or with a marker behind the slide so that while washing away the stain or anything, then the chemical doesn't go. Otherwise, just put a sticker and mention. Sometimes people also use gla a glass writer also on which we can write on the glass. After we have mentioned the patient's information or ID or name, whatever it is, we take a drop of blood. The blood sample to be used is of course from an EDTA tube. Usually, since it is in the hospital, we are doing it, so we use EDTA sample. We take a drop from it and we need to put. If not possible, if it's a quick blood smear method, like in a small clinical area or in small firms, in that case, then what we do is we just make a simple a finger puncher and making a finger puncher, we take a drop of it directly onto the slide and at the same time, we prepare the smear. So, taking one drop of blood from an EDTA tube and placing it over here, or in other words, if I teach you the method, how we do it, it can be this way, if I start. So let's forget this one and let's take this one. So basically, this is my slide. Here I have mentioned the patient information. I take the blood because this is the way how I focus. I take a patient's drop of blood and I put it in here. As soon as I put here the patient, I take my spreader. Spreaders can be of two types. It, either it can be a uh, cover slip or another same slide. In another same slide, it can be again the same edged one or it can be chipped edge one. As chipped edge slides are also available for helping the spreader move. What we do is we keep the spreading slide in there on top of the blood. Let the blood spread over the spreader and then with a nice angle of 30 degree, we bend the slide and push forward. This pushing method I have taught you in the practical part and you will understand it more clear how to perform it. And by that, we get a proper tongue-shaped smear. It is very necessary to find a tongue-shaped smear, otherwise we cannot do the proper reading. It is also very useful to have a thin, not too thick, not too thin, a medium level of a blood smear which has your 
head, body, and a tail. No waves present and no uh, bubbles or any drop particles or anything missing in between should be present. That should be completely avoided and this can be done only by practice and through proper cleaning of the slide and the proper use of the spreader along with your 30 degree angle in the brain. Some people might also say 45 degrees so it all depends upon the practice on how you can prepare the bread smear. Now, besides this thing you should also know that for malarial patient also it is very useful to find this type of blood smear. And in that cases, we can also have a very nice tongue shape. If you, it's not possible for you initially to get a tongue shape, at least make sure that you have completed the slide in such a way that it is two third of the slide is complete, which makes sure that no tongue shape, but at least there is slides near present in a thin form, not too thick and not very thin also. And clearly we can observe under the microscope. So let us come forward and see what are the different things we will look for under the microscope. As we know, we are coming forward to the staining part. The stains used in this practical are called Leishman's stain. Basically, we have different types of more stain, like for example, Jimsa stain, Field stain, Right stain. But I am using only Leishman stain as it is quick for me and uh, the work is going to be less in order to, or the procedure is less as compared to other ones. In Leishman stain, the first procedure is to cover the slide with around uh, let's say five to six drops of the stain and by adding five to six drops of stain we leave it for two minutes actually one to two minutes after one to two minutes we will add distilled water by adding distilled water on top of the smear we're not washing it away to the stain we are adding and covering the whole slide again with the distilled water and after covering it we should wait for around eight to ten minutes after waiting for around 8 to 10 minutes, then gradually we can use the tap water or again the still water and wash the slide with not too much pressure, otherwise the smear will run off. This procedure of course takes total around 12 to 15 minutes to complete with, along with of course experience and practice. Used only for not regular purposes, for certain cases only. For regular purpose, we can't use Leishman stain, we might have to use the field stain and this is quick. And in field stain, we have our three solutions already kept. The first solution is your methanol, on which acts as a uh, fixing agent. 10 times we dip. After that, we don't need to wait for drying or anything or washing away. We directly move to eosin. By moving into eosin, we stain the slide for the pink part, so that the red blood cells are stained. Again, 10 to 15 times. And finally, to our methylene blue, where we can stain again for 10 to 15 times by just dipping. All the procedures 10 to 15 times of dipping and then wash it again. After washing, let it dry and observe. So that is the very quickest method of washing. So this can be used for regular purpose for every slide that we prepare. But if for Leishman stain, we can use it only for certain people. And this is what we currently use because we know every patient is not having that type of issue. And CBC blood sample is already giving us a complete result. It's just for certain cases, if any of the uh, components of a blood cell is high or low, then we use the Leishman stay now after performing this thing we keep it for drying and after drying we observe under the microscope the observation on the microscope is going to be first the type of rbc's its morphology whether it is reticulocyte or it is a nucleated rbc teardrop we completely learn at the morphology it should be a biconcave disc shape secondly we also look for platelets in certain cases and then under WBCs, our five types of WBCs need to be observed completely. That is how we perform the differential counting. In my next video, I'll be focusing the slide onto the microscope and showing it to you how to perform and use the calculation method in order to calculate the differential counting. But after observing this thing, we need to make sure that the RBCs are colored pink, platelets like purple, WBCs are our four side, and properly we can see the nucleases have been stained properly along with watching the last two which are the monocytes and lymphocytes which are a granules and for the first three neutrophils basophil and eosinophils we are watching the granules literally so that we can identify and differentiate them with each other so this is the theoretical part of how to prepare a blood preparation and to stain them we will come forward and see how to do the practical part so the materials required for preparing the smear are our leishman stain with the pipette our distilled water in the bottle, 
the place to keep our slides for drying and staining, micro pipettes, EDTA blood sample of the patient, freshly collected, cover slips, slides, pipette for the suction, pair of gloves, a white sheet of paper and our, uh, so after this preparing the smear and staining them for future to save our slides, the slide uh, cover or slide holder. Fine. So let us go forward and see the first step in preparing our blood smear. As you can see over here, we have taken around 6 slides, out of which the 5 slides are going to be used for preparing the smear and the 6th one I'm going to use as a spreader. Now, the first thing you have to do is, I'm going to be using also some cover slip, I'm not that much clear with the cover slip, I prefer to use slide as we need a proper shape. So in the smear, as I explained in the lecture, we need to make sure that we have a body, we have a head and we have a tail. The smear has to be divided into three sections. For this, let me take some drop of blood. The minimum drop of blood you must take is not too much, neither less. So using the help of my pipette, I'm going to take some blood, aspirate it. I'm going to put around small drop of blood on it, like this much. This much. You can adjust the drop of the blood according to the requirement. So just check which one it is. Now, in these cases, I'll just show you as an example, like how it is prepared. We take our slide. So if this is the angle, I am having my drop in here. And this is the way I take the slide. I should hold it in this form, like that like this not like this this hand or not in this way and then the hand has to be like this you can either use your middle and the thumb finger to spread or the index finger in this one don't apply too much pressure that is wrong and then you need to have an angle angle is basically you can see when i'm just going to keep like this this line and you can see this is the angle actually this is the angle and this angle is supposed to be around 30 degrees so we need to roughly calculate 30 degrees over here after this is around 30 degrees we will just keep on the rough side go behind and touch the blood when the blood touches you're going to see that the blood spreads on this and this part when the blood spreads on this part we then move quickly we don't wait for more time so basically we just move. i'll just show you one example like this is the way and make sure all your slides are clean from the edges and especially the clean slide before putting the blood so that there is no any dust particles or anything as it will cause air bubbles in the smear so what i do is this is 30 degree angle i'll just take it and i'm going to go back when i move back i let the blood spread as you can see if it's not completely spread we will wait for some time for it to spread after it spreads i go little more back and then i push this is the first way of preparing a slide as you can see it is not completely a thumb shape but quite good enough for looking at the smear after slide um, after pre-staining it there are some air bubbles which were caused that was due to the spreader and the spreader might have some rough edges between them which has caused those bubbles let us try this with another slide or we will just keep it uh, discarded for some other use again i will just see the good side of my slide i'll do here we are going to see the rough edge 30 degree let the blood smear spread after it has spread i push back we move this is also one way but this is too small so we cannot accept this slide too small needs not to be done because we only have a head especially when we check for malarial parasites we need to have a complete spreading okay and never keep the blood for long term as i have done over here because that is going to cause the drying of the blood which will not help it to spread you can use the same spreader again after cleaning just to make sure you use it again or you can use a new slide if you're not having the new one as you can see this is causing difficulty in spreading and it has been tried for a long time and this is the one so this spreading is also important not correct so make sure that you're not too fast not too slow also but spreading the blood properly see all these are going to be called small ones as the blood drop might be dried i will not be able to prepare a smear from these ones this one looks little bit better as compared to all as we can see here the reason is i would say this one looks much better as it has little bit more height same like this 
these two have a bit much better height compared to these three so these three cannot be used at all because it's too small and this is too thin this is too thick this is in between thick and thin air spaces bubbles are also there which we can at least with practice we can just get rid of it so these two can be used properly now let us try one new slide and in this new slide i'll just show you with a fresh blood sample how quickly we can spread the blood in that so we'll take two slides again clean them nicely with no dust particles have my EDTA tube shaped take a sample of blood drop drop after doing that I'll quickly take my another slide which is going to be my spread up again neat rub the red 30 degree angle you need to see that the blood actually spreads in the slide as you can see it has spread this one so this is the perfect slide with a tongue shape which you need to see. Similarly, let's try in here. Spreading. Also perfect head. So this is the two perfect slide which we need. So it all accuracy, the speed, the time, the freshness of the blood, the number of minutes you have kept it over there in the drop. Make sure so these two slides as compared to these two will be regarded as the best slide for checking for your stain after smear is staining them and to check in the micros. Cool. It has a head. You can see this is the head region. This is the body and this is the thin tail. So this is perfect. Sometimes I also teach some of the students some another method if sometimes they are not comfortable in preparing the slides in this way. And that is we use a slide again. I'll just show you. And then, I just take this here, blood, I put a drop, put a drop, sometimes, usually this doesn't work that well, but sometimes it really does. What you need to do is, I hold the slide in my hand like that, clean slide. I, instead of taking the edge like this, I take this edge. And the same method, I push it back, let it spread. After it has spread completely with an angle, I then go like that. This is one another method. It goes this way, but also it will give you a big long smear also. Let me try with this blood. As in there, the blood draw was a little less. Let me push it. 30 degree, I know how I'm taking it. I let the blood smear push. And then I go. This is another one method of having a clean slide as you can see here. It doesn't have a tongue shape but it does have a very thin smear no waves in between a perfect head body and tail this is the perfect more slide so we can consider if you're looking literally for a tongue shape we can consider this slide to be a tongue shaped one and a complete smear we can take this one so we can also use this and this but standard way of using is a 30 degree using this edge and then spreading it whereas the non-standard method is this which i have shown you right now which is also very good in identifying the blood smear more in detail and more clearly let me do some more slides and show it to you and then we are going to compare about it as you can see here we had shown before these are the two tongue shape prepared using the normal slide method which is using our disc angle these three were the ones which I used the side method of the slide where I just did it like this and then I spread it. Among these, as you can see, this one also is good and we have these two. But when I compare all these three among the best slide method, I would choose these two because they have a very nice tall. We can see that the body has been divided into three sections which is the tail, the body and the head. Since we have these three sections easily divided, more lighter shade, mid darker and more darker here. This three, these two slides can be used the best and similarly here we can use as our head, body and our tail. So this all area can be used for body, this whole area can be used as tail and this whole area can be used as head. So this is the way to prepare the smear. Once the smears are prepared, we need to make sure that they have completely dried. As you can see, it's still wet. So we either keep it for air drying or you can blow the dryer. 
after air drying it completely our next step i will just show you in a simple slide i'll take this one in here because these still have to dry these ones are completely dry we'll move to the staining part in the staining part we have different types of stain as mentioned in the lecture i'm using leishman stain now a leishman stain contains all the types of reagent required for staining it completely so that we can see you can use it for the differential counts along with rbc and platelet what we need to do is we need to take our leishman stain cover the smear and leave it for around two minutes exactly that's it you just keep this concentrated stain for around two minutes after keeping it for two minutes we have to count the time and then add some distilled water and leave it for around 5 to 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we are going to wash away the slides and observe it under the microscope. As you can see here, we have finished 1 to 2 minutes and this slide is above to dry. We don't have to bring the condition of drying stage at all while staining. So this is not dried completely. So when it is 1 to 2 minutes over, we'll add some more water, distilled water into that one just to make the stain mix with the water well. So you see this one is completely dried, it's not mixing. But however, because of getting wet, we can mix it later. So we need to cover the whole slide with the stain and let it mix with the stain and keep it for the next 8 to 10 minutes. After 8 to 10 minutes, we will wash the slide with the distilled water again or tap water and let it dry and observe it under the microscope. After drying it for around 10 minutes, we will trim the slide in such a way and then start using the tap water or distilled water and wash your slides. Wash the slide completely till the stain has completely removed. This one in this case it has removed, I'm keeping it. Now let us try with this. Similarly this one, I'm not wearing the gloves because it's fine as I'm washing it. You cannot use full pressure otherwise that will help. You to that full pressure is going to remove the slide completely like the blood smear will get removed. Wash away. So we don't want to wash away the blood smear. As you can see, I had just done on this slide. I had pushed it very fast which made the smear move out as you can see here this made the smear move away so you need to make sure that it's not with full speed and anything and if you go slowly it will not remove this is the way you have to clean the slide after cleaning it we put it in the tilted position like that after keeping it tilted we let all the water get moved out when it is dry, we can observe it completely under the microscope. So this is the way we have to uh, stain the slides. In our next video, I will be showing you how to do differential counting using the same slides in the microscope. Thanks for watching the video.